Stop talking about comic books or I'll kill you. I don't care if the Hulk could defeat the man. Hey there and good morning comic fans. It's Bullseye Bob here. Another Saturday morning. Another for a ready to, for another episode of having comics with my coffee. And of course I'm coming to you from the Everything Comics channel. And yes, it is November, bright, uh, well it's not sunny morning yet, as you can see outside, it's still pretty dark here in Portland. It's 6.30 in the morning, folks, that's what time I do this show. Uh, but I'm coming to you, as always, from live and living color from the Refuge Coffee House at 9217 Southeast Foster Road, that's in Portland. Uh, Refuge Coffee House, an amazing uh, place where I just come and hang out, have some coffee, and uh, review the books that I got this week. And so, glad to see you guys. And so uh, today um, I'm having a, um, I'm having Amer an Americano with some vanilla sweetener inside of it. It's pretty tasty. Uh, of course, I love these cups that they have. Um, if you're looking for a cool place to come hang out, have some coffee, check out The Refuge. Like I said, 9217 Southeast Foster Road. Love the folks here, love the atmosphere. And uh, hey, they let me come in and do my show here. So I really want to thank them. Um, great family. And uh, I'm just really pleased to be able to come and, and hang out here and, and uh, check out my comics, man. So before we get started in today's show, I do have a couple of announcements. Um, so this week will be the last week we have like this format, um, which is basically as soon as I'm done with the show, I rush home and... I do a couple of edits and drop in a couple of graphics and then post, you know, what, what, what I recorded this morning. Next week, uh, we're going to do a little bit different. It's going to take a little bit longer because I'm going to be a little more spoilery with my reviews and uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop in some graphics and do a little more editing and uh, just get a little more in-depth in the books that I'm reviewing. And so uh, next week it won't drop as early in the day, probably it'll drop at night. Uh, but I think you'll like the changes that I'm making. And uh, like I said, you know, this is a work in progress. I, I'm trying new things. And uh, so we'll see where, where that takes us. And then the other thing is, um, today, uh, I don't know uh, how many of you live in the Portland area, Portland, Oregon, but uh, today's the Frankenstein Swap. Yeah! Um, we'll be hanging out at the Frankenstein Swap today. Of course, that's uh, at the uh, Eagles Lodge here in Portland. Uh, it's 4904 Southeast Hawthorne Boulevard in Portland, Oregon, 97215. Check it out, folks. It's a buck to get in. And this is about as close to a real Comic-Con as you're going to get. Don't get me wrong. I love some of the bigger cons where you get a lot of the big stars that come. Um, not like TV stars, but, you know, my rock stars, which are the comic creators. Uh, a lot of, you know, comic book vendors. But then you also have this whole pop culture thing that's going on that really is taking it to a whole other level. It's not so much Comic-Con anymore, but a pop culture con. This is like a real Comic-Con where they used to get together in, in uh, the basements of hotels and nothing but just comic vendors and comic book aficionados and collectors and geeks and nerds. And uh, people are swapping books and buying books. And it's just wall-to-wall -wall comics, folks. Great place to, to come and hang out. It's only a buck to get in. You can bring your beer with you if you want. So I'll be there. It's happening from 11 to 5 today. Um, if you're here in Portland, come come to the Frankenstein, man, and come say hi, man. I'd love to meet you. The other thing is tonight at uh, 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, uh, I will be on the Comic Book G-Spot channel and uh, the uh, Book with a Hook show. My, my buddy Robert Galvin, he has a show in Wisconsin called uh, Book with a Hook, and uh, I'll be on there tonight. Like I said, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Uh, check out this brother's channel. It's an awesome channel. Uh, a lot of great content there. And uh, he comes to you live and in living color you know, every Saturday night. And so come, come check us out tonight. I'd love, love to see you guys. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get into uh, the comics that I picked up this week. That would have been on October 30th, 2019. Uh, this is the books that were on my pull list this week. Uh, of course, I'll always show you something that's not on my pull list as well. And at the end, I have a, a question from uh, one of you guys for, uh, from one of the comments that were left last week. And uh, so I'm looking forward to the show today. So let's get right into it. So the first book today uh, I have to show you is a Marvel book. And uh, we got Fantastic Four Grand Design. 
Yes, uh, I've been really excited for this book to come out, and um, it's by Tom Scioli. And uh, I have to tell you, you know, as excited as I was for this to come out, um, not a fan. I am not a fan. Uh, I loved the grand is it the X Men grand design uh, by Ed Piscor. That was an amazing book. All those books are great. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to introduce somebody to the X Men world without having to have them read all the books, it was the perfect book to hand to somebody. Um, had that old comic book feel to it. And uh, I think they really caught on to something that was pretty neat and uh, something I'd like to see a lot more of. And so I was hoping they would do the same thing with this book and go through the uh, Fantastic Four history like they did with the X-Men history. And they didn't do that inside of this book. Uh, it kind of starts off not with the Fantastic Four history, but kind of the beginnings of the Earth. And uh, they get into the whole um, uh, Eternals and Deviants, how they got started and how they were here on Earth. And then, of course, the Kree coming and the Inhumans being here uh, and how they had Adelan and um, Atlantis. And they kind of build how the Earth was formed with all these different races. And um, you don't really even get into the Fantastic Four until the next couple of pages. It's, it's just kind of weird. Uh, and then they didn't do the same thing that they did with um, X-Men Grand Design where they go through the linear history of the X-Men so you kind of get from beginning to end you know who they are, what their mission is, what they've gone through to get to where they're at and uh, you kind of go through this progression of, of the X-Men which was really cool. This doesn't do that. It kind of takes this story from this book and this story from this book and kind of puts them all together and they're not really cohesive but I'll tell you what, it, it's just kind of weird because um, each of those books takes anywhere between four to six panels on a page. And there's a lot of panels on a page, folks. Um, and so because it's broken up in all these different stories and it, it doesn't break them up that way, I just kind of know that it is. You look in the back of the book, it shows you that. But because it's not broken up, um, it just kind of tries to make it look like all one story. It doesn't meld. And, um, you know, you don't even get into the Fantastic Four um, uh, stuff until uh, like a couple pages in. And then it kind of drops you at the end at the whole Silver Surfer Galactus thing, which is just kind of weird. I mean, there's so much history they went over before they got to that. And, of course, you know, that happened, you know, very early on in the, in the, in the run with uh, Stan Lee and, uh, and uh, um, Jack Kirby. And so, you know, as much as I was looking forward to this, um, I don't know if I'll pick up the next one. Wasn't a fan. I think they went too far into uh, trying to gain that whole old comic book feel, and it just didn't work for me. So, yeah, I, I had high hopes for that one. So, um, moving on, folks. So the next one I have is uh, one of the DC Black Label. This is uh, Basket Full of Heads. Um, you know, I was really um, looking forward to this one as well um, because I, I'm really enjoying this Black Label stuff, guys. And when I heard that uh, Joe Hill was going to be writing um, for Black Label, bringing some of the horror, horror comics in, I thought, man, let, let's go for it. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and, oh, you know, of course, you know, Joe Hill being uh, Stephen King's son and, um, you know, he's really hot you know when it comes to the horror stuff right now it's awesome stuff this book really slow read um i was kind of really hoping to stick my teeth into into something that was gonna really grab me from the beginning it's it's a really slow read it kind of gets into um you know why this guy's carrying this basket of heads and it really never tells you why it kind of gives you a backstory to bring the possibility of how this could happen but it doesn't really get into why he's carrying around this basket of heads, talking heads, by the way. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the artwork is good. I like the artwork. Um, the story was really slow, but um, this is one I'm gonna have to sit with for a bit in order to get the full story. And so, um, because it's Joe Hill, I'm gonna give it another, maybe a couple issues and uh, see where this goes. But um, again, they got a number of these books coming out that are horror books for um, what they call the, the Hill House uh, imprint on DC's Black Label. I gotta tell you, inside of this book, I was actually um, 
I actually really liked the very, they had a cut like three page story, which was the uh, chapter one of what they call the sea dogs. And I tell you what, I, I like that better than I like the whole, whole book of this. And so I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited to see where they go with that story. Um, I'm not going to get into that here, but um, it's definitely, um, if you're going to check this book out, make sure you check out that end story at the end. It's really good. <clears throat> so moving on, we have uh, Marvel Zombies Resurrection. Yes. And of course, they had a number of covers that came out for this this week. You know me, being a huge Daredevil fan, I had to pick up this Daredevil variant. Um, absolutely love this. You know, I've loved the um, Marvel Zombies issues in the past. Um, I forget the guy who wrote them, but um, they were really, the artwork was insane. The story was good. There was a lot of humor to it, which made it even better. Um, this is not written by that guy. Um, and, you know, I know there's been Marvel's, Marvel Zombies 1 through 5. I think I stopped at 3. Um, so I, didn't, I haven't read Marvel Zombies 4 and 5. But I was told you didn't need to have read either one of those to, to get into this. This was going to be like a whole new storyline. i got to tell you, folks, it is. This is a whole uh, new deal. And, um, you know, I, it didn't have the humor that I like in the original Marvel Zombies books. But I like this, I really did. I mean, it starts off with the distress call from space from Captain Marvel. Uh, Fantastic Four get that call. Um, they ask a bunch of other heroes to come with them. So there's some people from the X-Men who come, some people from the Avengers who come. They take this team and they go out into space because it, uh, it's this, the, the message is kind of broken up so they don't really know what's going on. Uh, but Reed Richards does this imaging thing and they can see the head of Galactus. and um, so they figure they need to get out there to this, this, this distress call with where Captain Marvel is, is calling them. And they get out there and sure enough, Galactus is dead, man. He's just a husk floating in space and uh, really eerie. So cool. And then they uh, realize that somebody looks like somebody is basically converting his body into a vessel. And uh, so they want to get on to get onto his body and go check it out. And basically they're... They want to take some samples and they, they want to destroy his body before anybody else in the universe can come and take his tech and all that other stuff. And um, boom, spoilers guys, they find out that that distress call from Captain Marvel, she was actually already a zombie and they there's already a bunch of zombies on this, this husk of Galactus and bam, they start laying into our heroes and next thing you know, they're on their way to Earth, man, and the, the, the big battle's coming. Uh, most of your favorite heroes, the Fantastic Four, a bunch of the Avengers, a couple of the X-Men, they've been turned, man. They're zombies already. So this first book, really cool. Really enjoyed it. Loved the artwork. And uh, I can't wait to see where they go next with it because um, this is going to be a whole new ride. Nothing like the original Marvel zombie stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in checking it out. And you should too. Then we got our next book today, another Marvel book. Um, we got the new Excalibur, folks. Uh, and I, I'm sure you've noticed in the last couple of weeks uh, these new X books. I've picked up the variant cover by covers by Mark Bagley. I really enjoy these. Um, I like the books with the connecting covers, and I'm really hoping that they all connect, not just two books, but you know, four, five, and six books all connect with these these variant covers. Um, but anyway, let's get into the book Excalibur. You know. Um, you know, I have, I have high hopes for these X books, um, and maybe I have too much of a high hope for them. Uh, you know, I'd really like it um, if we went back to the old days, man. I just want my old X Men back, and we haven't had them for years. Um, I know that I know that books have to evolve. I know stories have to evolve, um, but they have made the whole X universe so muddled uh, that it's not even fun to read them anymore half the time. Um, and so with, with this whole new thing with Jonathan Hickman and how he's created the X-verse, I like it. I love some of the things that he's doing. I think he's made it too big. It feels like it should be a whole other universe outside of what Marvel is doing and just make the X-verse its own thing. Because um, it's, it's gotten too big. Now, I mean, they've come together as their own nation on an island. Uh, not only that, but they can open portals wherever they want on, on the face of the earth. Um, I think it makes them too powerful. I think it makes them too much of an affront to the rest of the world. 
I get it. For years they said, hey, we want to help you, uh, you know, and, and work with us. We can work with you. And, of course, they've always been attacked. And finally they've just come to the place and said, okay, we're just going to go on our, our own way. And we're going to start our own nation completely separate from everybody. And you guys are not allowed here. And uh, I think if something like that would happen, it would be an act of war all the way across the face of the earth. And, I mean, who's there to protect the humans but superheroes? And I think it would be a much bigger deal than what we're seeing so far. Who knows? I mean, we'll probably start seeing books where the rest of the world's starting to react to this. We haven't seen it yet, uh, which makes me think that maybe this is a pocket universe. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave, leave a comment. Um, I'm... I, I'm really interested to see where they go with this whole new Krakoa X-Men universe. Uh, but anyway, back to the book, Excalibur. Um, this is not the Excalibur team that I remember. This is a whole brand new team. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's I mean, it, it's, it's a cool book. It's got great artwork. Um, you know, the story, uh, they got this. If you read the first X book, you know that um, there's this guy named Egg, and he can resurrect uh, people who have died. And uh, we we saw in the first book um, one of the Summers family who had, had been dead for a while. They resurrected him. He's a powerful mutant. I can't remember what his name is, but he's now part of that new, new X Men team. Inside of this book, it kind of revolves around Betsy Braddock and the Braddock twins. Of course, you know, um, Betsy's brother, gosh, you can't think of his name, is Captain Britain. Um, and so in the forming of this new Excalibur team, um, there's this thing that's going on in the other world. And of course, the other world is Camelot. Um, and we've seen that before inside of the Excalibur books. And uh, Morgan Le Fay is basically, um, she's got this thing going on and um, they need to deal with it, and um, I'm, I kind of am, I, don't, I read this a couple nights ago, so I'm, I'm trying to remember how the whole portal thing happens. All you need to know is mag only magic users can go through the portal, and um, so it, it turns out that Betsy Braddock, um, who normally is Psylocke, spoilers, she actually becomes Captain Britain. Uh, her brother gets trapped there in the other world. She comes back to the portal as Captain Britain. Of course, she'll be the leader of the Excalibur team. Uh, kind of weird. We got a, uh, Apocalypse on this team. Um, that just brings a whole other dynamic to this. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. I don't know if I liked it or not. Um, one of the characters they resurrected was one of Betsy's other brothers. I didn't like him in the original books. He was like, bring, they were like bringing Burt Reynolds into the comic books. You know, he was pretty much naked, had the mustache and the whole works. And um, so, I don't know, just kind of a weird choice for, uh, for this team. And uh, I don't know if I'll be picking this up going forward. Um, and that's kind of the same way with all the rest of these books. I mean, guys, if you're going to bring the X-Men universe, great. But give me something I can sick my teeth into. Give me a team that I can get behind. And so far with these teams, uh, you know, I think what they've done is spread out all our favorite characters uh, so that we'll gravitate towards one or the other. And that's fine. Uh, but give me some substance. Give me a team that, that uh, I can stand behind that I'm, I want to follow. And so far, none of these teams that they brought up, I want to follow. I'll follow the first team because Wolverine's on it. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. I've always loved Cyclops. Best leader in comics i think um but here we go you know here's another one of the x books that i don't know if i'm gonna be behind it so there's excalibur number one folks um now you know in my last couple of reviews in the last couple of weeks you know you may think i'm a dc dude <laughs> i'm not uh you know i i read all comics i read independence dc marvel uh, but because of the way these reviews have, come, have been coming out, it may seem like I'm a DC guy. I, I'm really not. Uh, but I got to tell you, they're killing it right now. Um, here's one of the, the Black Label. Uh, this is a book called The Last God. Oh, man, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, it starts off with these, um, these heroes. And the heroes are kind of follow the archetypes of what you would normally see in a fantasy type story. Like a Game of Thrones or Dungeons and Dragons type thing. And um, so they follow the archetypes. They got, 
you know, the heavy um, fighter, they got a magic user, they got an elf that's kind of like a ranger and also a magic user. Um, and these, these heroes are kind of revered because they took down um, um, the last god, which is this thing called the Plague of Flowers. And um, it was basically going to destroy that world. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the old Dungeons and Dragons Juju Zombies. Um, it basically is this plant looking thing that infects people and they become zombified. Really creepy looking, cool artwork. But you got this, this, uh, these, these heroes that have been revered for, for doing this and they're kind of celebrating uh, those heroes and especially um, the king. This was one guy that is the king who was the one who went in and, and, and killed this, this uh, plague of flowers. And it turns out that they didn't kill the, the, the plague of flowers, it just looked like that and the king had actually been infected and now they're just finding this out and bam, he's starting to spread and uh, can't wait to see where they go with this. Uh, great artwork, great story, great writing. Um, check this one out if you get a chance, guys. I know it's not a normal hero comic book, uh, but for this new DC Black Label, this is, this is awesome stuff. Can't wait to see where they go with this. And then this one would probably be, I'm gonna wait for this one. Uh, next one I got is another DC Black Label. Um, this is the Joker that smiles. Now, and by the way, there were two different covers for this. I know everybody likes the other cover. I like this one. I thought it was creepy. Um, one of the main reasons I wanted to pick up this book is because it was written by Jeff Lemire. Love Jeff Lemire's writing. Um, and, you know, I really enjoyed this. Uh, now, this story has been told before. I mean, how many times have we seen a story where the Joker's in, in with a, a therapist and lo and behold, he's gotten inside of their head and um, messed them up and turned them? Same type of thing goes on inside this story, but it's a lot of fun. I love Jeff Lemire's writing. Uh, he, you know, he, he doesn't, it's not one where, you, where you're guessing what's going on. You kind of know what's going on and you're just kind of on the ride to see, you know, how it ends up. And it ends up just like you, you'd think it would. I don't know if there are going to be more issues going forward. Maybe other therapists are going to come in. I don't know because the Joker really doesn't escape in this one. But um, I liked it. I liked the, I liked the artwork. Uh, it was a good, it's a very fast read. I mean, for one of these magazine, um, uh, you know, format books, it was actually kind of short. Um, but if they do come out with another one, I will be picking it up because it was, it was really good. And then this one would be my pick of the week, folks. Um, this is another one of those tales from the dark multiverse. I uh, remember a couple of weeks ago, I reviewed one of these where they went back and did Nightfall back where Bane breaks Batman's back, and they did a whole different uh, take on that story. Um, you know, some people are saying this is DC's what if now. I don't think so, even though they follow the what if format, very much so. I really believe that these tales from the dark multiverse are leading up to, like I was saying last week, or maybe the week before, a new crisis on Infinite Earths. We know that DC is gonna be rebooting everything getting rid of a bunch of characters and, and, and bringing up these new characters. That's what the rumor is. Um, matter of fact, it's not a rumor. I mean, it's published. They're going to be doing this, folks. That didn't work so well for Marvel. I don't think it's going to work too well for DC. That's my opinion. But um, this book, Tales from the Dark Multiverse, it gets into the death of Superman. Yes, the original story where Doomsday kills Superman. Love that story. Um, Dan Jurgens wrote, wrote it back in the day, um, back in the 90s. Uh, it was an iconic story. This goes back to that story. This is another one of those worlds that goes back to that story. And we see something different happen. So in this particular case, Lois is so stricken with grief and she's so angry at all the rest of the heroes because nobody helped Superman. And then she sees how they, how they pay tribute to him and uh, she gets very angry at that because she said he helped everybody for all this time. And it seems like you don't even know who he is. And so she's very angry. And uh, she got this scene where she basically goes back to 
uh, his house in Smallville and uh, sits with Martha for a bit because that's what Clark would want her to do. And then uh, she gets this other uh, piece inside of her where she should go back to the uh, Fortress of Solitude and take his cape, his baby blanket, and lay it to rest there. And when she gets there, um, there's this um, there's this being, I can't think of what his name is, the uh, um, Exeter, something like that. Uh, but he basically is charged with keeping Clark safe. He's the one that puts him into the life chamber uh, to basically bring him back to life. That's his job. And in this particular case, he was too late. And so now he has all of this Krypton energy, this life energy that he's supposed to instill inside of Clark. And, and it, Clark's dead. He, he, it, his body won't take it. And so Lois basically says, I'll take it. And this being says, no, it'll kill you. Can't do it. And she said, no, just give it to me. I'm, I'm willing to. And so she does. She doesn't die. And she takes on the full power of Superman, folks. And I got to tell you, it just gets dark from here. Because she takes a look at the earth. And she starts to wonder. Because she can see everything. She sees the truth now. She starts to wonder, why didn't Superman take care of all this stuff? Right? And so she basically goes down. And the first thing she does is she kills Lex Luthor, man. I mean, he's sitting there all smug and inside of his office having this conversation with her like he would Superman, like, you're not going to do anything to me. And man, she grabs a hold of him, takes him to space and burns him. And that's kind of where it starts. And she's like, this is what should have happened a long time ago. If you would have killed these guys, then all of this death and stuff on Earth would have never happened. And so she goes down, she takes out Deathstroke. She takes out, I mean, all, all these major villains on Earth. Uh, just kills him and then finally she's chasing the joker and she finally gets the joker she kills him and batman shows up and she says lois you can't do this and um she says there's a line that we just don't cross and she's like man bullcrap i don't care about your line i've been hearing about that for years it doesn't work and oh man it just hit me like here's the conversation you know from one of my favorite books which is daredevil when daredevil and punisher are having this this deep conversation about how Punisher does things, which is to basically kill the guys who cause all these things. And Daredevil saying, no, you can't do that because you're not God. And, and some of these guys can, you know, can turn. And, and here's that, that dichotomy of, of that conversation happening between Batman and Lois Lane. So cool. Love it. And, uh, and, but it doesn't go anywhere because she just does, she won't hear nothing. And next thing she kills Batman. It's so cool. Unbelievable. Then, of course, you know, uh, in the original books, all the four different iterations of Superman uh, come to Earth. Hated that back then. You had to buy four different books to find out if Superman was going to come back. And um, so she ends up basically starting to have a fight with these guys. And um, lo and behold, Batman Cyborg comes. Huge fight ensues. A couple of those guys, a couple of those Superman get killed. And uh, finally, Clark comes back. And when he comes back and sees what Lois has become, he's horrified. Um, huge fight ensues between him and uh, Cyborg Superman. And uh, finally, uh, in the end, uh, because of what Lois has done, Superman dies for good this time. And she becomes uh, the reason why Superman will never be seen again. So dark, but so cool. I recommend picking up these books, these Tales from the Dark Multiverse. Uh, tagline at the end of this one, I noticed that the next one they're going to do is uh, Blackest Night. So we need some Green Lantern action next time, folks. So cool. Love it. If you're not reading these, you should be because these are some of the best books uh, I've, I've been reading here lately. Good stuff. And then <clears throat> the last, last book I got is, of course, I always show you guys something that wasn't on my pull list this week. Um, and so this week I picked up one of my favorite covers of all time in Daredevil. This is Daredevil number 38. Of course, that's the Dr. Doom action there. Um, one of my favorite covers of all time. And I really picked up a nice copy of this. There are no spine ticks on this, folks. There are a couple of smatterings around the edges here, so it's not perfect, but I would probably say it's either a seven, 7.5, maybe even an eight. But again, one of my favorite covers of all time. It's not one I'll be able to get a signature on. Um, Stan Lee wrote it. Gene Cullen did the, the, the pencils. Both of those uh, guys have passed away. Legends. 
Um, rest in peace, you guys. But uh, again, one of my favorite covers of all time. Thought I'd bring it to you guys and show it to you. So that's it, folks. That's my books for the week. And of course, uh, I always end with uh, a question uh, that comes from the chat. And uh, this week I had a couple of questions. Uh, one came from Ian Fiddler. And his question was, what got you into comics and collecting, you know, collecting and reading? And, you know, I'd love to answer that here on the show. But, I mean, I'm going to film a whole different episode just about that because I got quite a story on how I got into comics. Love to share that with you guys. Ian, thank you very much for that question. Uh, it gets down to the heart of why I'm so passionate about this stuff. And uh, so I'll be posting that soon. Hope you guys will join me on that. Um, because it's something that uh, I really enjoy telling. So the actual question of the week comes from the old comic smell. And uh, his question is, which do I like better, Vertigo or Black Label? Got to be honest with you folks. Uh, I'm actually glad Vertigo's gone. Um, you know, and that's kind of hard to say because, you know, I've read so many of the books over the years. And um, I started to realize that, you know, I was picking up a lot of that stuff out of habit. Uh, Vertigo, I, I think, lost its edge a long time ago. Uh, it be started to become full of a bullpen of writers that um, basically put comic books second and their political agendas first. And if you start to read the, a lot of the books that came out in the last, heck, 10 years, you'll start to see that um, a lot of it had to do with their political views and you know how much they wanted to push that stuff and I think that came first inside of the writing before what we would consider good comic book writing and uh, I think it got really stale and um, as much as I was very against Vertigo being um, you know completely dropped um, it was you know uh, because again I'm a creature of habit right uh, I didn't want to see it to go I didn't want to see it go but I have to tell you, let me get a drink of my coffee here. I have to tell you, since they started this Black Label stuff, I've been having fun, folks. Here's another one of the Black Label books that came out this week. I didn't review this one, uh, but this is Harleen number two. Um, the, the Hill House, uh, the stuff that they're starting to do, uh, that's Black Label. Um, some of them are these magazine format, uh, some of them are, are just prestige format, um, but I, I have to say it, it, um, it feels like they've gone back to great comic storytelling. Uh, I'm really enjoying the writing, uh, especially inside of these uh, larger format ma magazines. I know a lot of people don't like these, uh, but I tell you what, if they do books like this, where the artwork is just amazing uh, and the story writing is, the writing is so good, um, I'm on board, folks. Uh, you know, this stuff is, is awesome. I'm having so much fun with a lot of this Black Label stuff. I know a lot of it's been Bat-centric. I don't mind that because I love the Batman universe. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'm really having fun with this Black Label stuff. Um, and here we are just, what, six, seven months in? And uh, I don't miss Vertigo, man. I'll tell you right now, I don't miss Vertigo. Um, I got... I got really sick and tired of turning the pages and it was just all about you know their political views and uh, I think that that bullpen just needed to get you know washed out of there and that's what they did and uh, now they're back to good storytelling I really hope they keep it that way uh, because I'm excited to see what comes out next and they're they're not doing just hero books um, you know we got that last God st story that, that that came out they're doing you know the horror books and so uh, I think we're going to get some really cool stuff out of this. And uh, I'm on board with it. You give me good content, you got my money. And so that's my answer, folks. Hope you, hope you enjoyed that. Do me a favor, leave, leave a comment. Uh, ask me a question. That's what I love, the give and take between uh, you know, us and the community here. Um, and uh, again, I'll pick a random question every week, and uh, we'll use that on the show. And uh, to what, what do you think? Vertigo or Black Label? What's your opinion on it? gave you mine love to hear yours well that's it for our show today folks uh thank you for for joining me today love having some coffee with you talking about comic books again i'm here live and in living color from the refuge coffee house at 9217 southeast foster road again come on in grab a coffee hang out 
Um, even the owners, they even know stuff about comics too. They're great people. Um, but, uh, and if you're ever going to stop by here, let me know. I'll, I'll come and join you. Have a coffee with you. I'd really like that. And until next week, folks, make sure that you're supporting comics. Support your local comic shop. And uh, we'll see you soon. Excelsior. Whether Logan's claws could pierce Steve Rogers'